Hello and welcome to Bottom Line, your weekly enlightenment and good governance campaign talk show. The 2023 multi elections are almost here and the election calendar is at full speed following the registration of voters and now the verification of voters' information. But tempers are beginning to flare up with politicians looking askance at one another and things going berserk. Just last week, the country's law-making house, our parliament, was transformed into a boxing ring with elected MPs sending punches and throwing any object they could lay hands on in place of making laws. <clears throat> this follows the tabling of regulations for the proportional representation electoral system by the Deputy Minister of Justice. The cause for this standoff is unclear, but report from the Clerk of Parliament states that millions of films of property were destroyed by people called Honorable Members of Parliament. With me in the studios to talk on that issue, I mean in Parliament, is SFPP's Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte of Constituency 132 and the APC's Honorable Abdul Kabo of Constituency 077. Welcome to Bottom Line, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You too can be part of this program by following us or having a say on our Facebook page at SLBC TV channel 31 or by SMS, the number you find on your screen. 030 My name is Joseph Egbenakapua. Welcome back to the program. Bottom line, like I said, I have here with me two members of parliament, honorable members of parliament, the honorable Abdul Kabo and the honorable, uh, well, fully called Tawa Conte. Um, um, welcome to the program. Um, let, let's get started. This is about events of last week. I mean, it was all over social media, you know, following reports that the Deputy Minister of Justice was to table a particular document uh, before the well, and then at some point it all got sad. I mean, it was a bad spectacle in the well. I mean, last Wednesday, wasn't it? Sorry, of you. The Honorable Abdukabo, I mean... Yeah, what happened ought not to have happened. Yeah. And I want to believe that um, we are consultations uh, very much permit um, what happened ought not to be happened. And um, this is a wake up call for Alice as a whole. You know, the idea of forcefully letting things happen, forcefully getting your way, you know, should be stopped. You know, I mean, the House of Parliament is a house of negotiation, if it's a house of talk. The word Parliament, Parliament is a French word that came from talk, you know, so it's a, it's, a, it's a house of talk, so you cannot calculate that talk or that dialogue or that lobby, you know, with the use of force, being it least to the well and all, you know, I don't believe that also, okay. Honorable Tower I think um, it is a demonstration of <clears throat> how far we've come as a country, it's an exhibition of how bad tested people can accept being second. It is a show of intolerance and it's a complete disregard for the house that is based on processes and procedure or the house that prides itself on being the house that is uh, conducting its business in line with processes and procedure to degenerate into a fighting mood for the second time. Let's not forget that this was not the first time that our colleagues in the EPC have used force to stop the business of parliament, whereas instruments before us, be the standing order, be the constitution, gives procedures and processes as to how to contain the paper. Whether it is statutory instrument, whether it is constitutional instrument, there are provisions in the constitutions enshrined in subsection 7 or section 170 as to how you can counter or how you can stop a paper. And if for any reason the house that has pride itself to conduct its business using the processes and procedure that it had set out, let's not forget that the constitution was a creature of parliament. It was parliament that promoted the constitution of Sierra Leone, Act number 6 of 1991. If this was happened before 1991, one could understand because you would say, okay, uh, there are various, uh, it was a one party system, it was a whole lot, but this is a multi party democratic system. Well, anybody, any party, 
can tomorrow wake up in the morning and find itself at state house leading the country. So it is of no use for members of parliament to resort to fist fights to stop the laying of a paper. The laying of a paper does not amount to making the paper a law. When a paper is laid in the table of parliament, as per well, subsection 7 or 170, that paper will have to take 21 days without a motion being moved or a notice of motion being given by a member of parliament as to requesting a debate and an annulment of that paper. And if you seek an annulment of the paper, you would have to lobby if you don't have the numbers. If you seek an annulment of the paper, you would have to convince your colleagues. Let's not forget that between 2012 and 2017, the APC was having 72 members of parliament. At the time, 74 was the threshold for two thirds. But even though they were two less, it was not assumed that member, uh, members of the parliament chief Tessie would support them automatically. Neither was it presumed that members of the opposition would be opposed to anything they want that would need two thirds. And let's not forget, let the public be reminded that it was between 20, 2012 and 2017 that section 79 and section 80 of the constitution that has to do with the election of the speaker and the deputy that was amended by the APC parliament led almost two thirds. But nobody from the SIPP resorts to fighting. So we have to understand the nexus between getting things done in the House of Law and the House of Processes and Procedure and getting things done in a way in which our colleagues want to present themselves as the victim. Because that is the picture. The picture is like my honorable colleague has said, we need to resort to dialogue, we need to engage. And let's not forget that we are guided by the Constitution, Section 54, Subsection 4 of Section 53, and Subsection 15 of Section 171. It is any person that this law, this Constitution, says you should consult. You are not bound by the outcome of that consultation. That is the law. It is not me. I am not the draft of the Constitution. Dr. Abulai Conte, Dr. Abbas Bundu, uh, 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 Ibrahim Ben Kagbo and others were in Parliament at the time. They said so, that a consultation that everybody is relying on, everybody wants to use as the medium of uh, 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 escape. The Constitution says you can consult, yes, but you are not bound by the outcome of the consultation. The consultation can give you an outcome, but you can choose another path. So for me, I would want to end this first submission by saying it was a way of continually pushing this message that everything that we do in parliament as a government is done power parliament. But that is not the case because there are procedures that they should have lied on. All right. I mean, it, it, it would appear that all of this um, boil down to... Um, the procedure perhaps you know um, that's either ministers or maybe other members of um, the public appear in parliament or lay paper uh, on the table or in the well of parliament honorable what is the standard procedure if you may you know insofar as tabling or laying papers in parliament you know an issue and how why does it appear that sometimes, you know, tempers flare up in so far as that process or that procedure is an issue as we, we saw last, last week. Well, before I answer your question, please permit me to make a few corrections. You see, there is the, the, the um, upper of the parliament was between two political parties, okay. SLPP and APC. Yeah, APC. The MPs who were injured by SLPP MPs. In fact, only Ozan Tolly was admitted immediately after the the, 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 the problem in the way. He was admitted. But now Tawa is here and saying it is APC MPs who fought. You see? And the report they read in Parliament was bias. No SLPP MPs. No SLPP MP who was found guilty or was reprimanded, or only APC MPs were listed in the court because they are in governance. So they think because they are in governance, they can victimize anybody. But you would see clearly on videos, SLPP MPs throwing missiles on APC MPs 
SLPP MPs hitting APC MPs. But now in the report they wrote the only indicted APC MPs because they are in governance. So they think whatever they do in the world, nobody can hold them responsible because they have the seats. They control the police, they control state apparatus. So even when they injured APC MPs, you know, nobody okay. will ask them questions. Let me come let me yeah. come to a question now about procedures. Now it is very clear. You know, you have when you want to amend the laws, you must follow strictly the procedures how you amend the laws. Yeah? They went with regulations. And what gave them the mandate to go with regulations? Section 33 of the Constitution. It says ECSM can take regulations to Parliament in the form of statutory instruments to help them conduct either voters' registration or elections. These regulations are to give effect to the responsibility assigned to them by the Constitution. Like, for example, when ECSM wanted to conduct the voter registration by two phases, you know, they went to it. That is it. You went to it. They, they, they will go with regulations to Parliament to help them enhance their responsibility given to them by the Constitution to register voters. But you cannot amend the Constitution in those regulations. You don't amend the Constitution in a subsidiary law. What they did was to take a regulation to Parliament in which the Constitution was amended. Let me tell you how. The Constitution, the clause they relied on for the conduct of um, elections to um, um, proportional representation, let me read 38 a It says, in the district block representation system, the election shall be conducted, I underline the word shall, shall be conducted, shall be contested, in each specified district by political parties. This is what the Constitution is saying, that the election shall be contested by political parties. It did not stop there. For the block or the number of seats in Parliament allocated to the district by or under any Act of Parliament, and the political parties shall, allo shall be allocated seats in Parliament by the Electoral Commissioner. Commission on the basis of their proportional share of the total district vote. And three says, members of parliament for the seat won by political parties. So the amendment they rely on is specifically insisting on political parties. So if you want to bring in independent candidates, which we are not made which no provisions we are made for in the constitution you need to amend the constitution to be political parties and independent candidates you cannot circumvent amending the constitution by amending bringing regulations that tampers with the constitution you cannot amend the constitution to a regulation and let me tell you why it is they fail to re to amend the constitution because they do not have the two-thirds majority votes to amend the constitution but in the regulation, the statutory regulation, the statutory instrument they brought to Parliament, they can just lay it. When they lay it, for you to annul it, you need two-thirds majority votes to annul it. So they want to amend the constitution so repetitiously, or they want to circumvent the procedure of amending the constitution. Go to section 108 of the constitution, it is very clear. Even when you want to copy what is in the constitution, so any other act or law, you need to touch votes. But they don't want you to touch votes. That is why, in fact, it is treasonous for them. <coughs> All right, um, um, you've made a point. But then I will stay with you on one point. When we get to the fact of, um, I mean, these, these um, um, opening um, statements insofar as circumventing or not circumventing the, the Constitution by way of introducing um, the regulations, but um, what I will stay with you on is, is the <coughs> point that assuming, um, um, without conce conceding, that these processes um, were flawed, okay, that they, they wanted to introduce or to amend 
the constitution by way of the regulations. I mean, how do you respond to issues like those? In the event you sense that, as a political party, as honorable members, how do you respond? Is it by throwing punches? No, 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 no. Firstly, like I said, you know, parliament, no member of parliament must be suppressed from here, here in our views. You know, because of the fact that we have seen some aspects of the constitution being amended in the, in the regulation, which ought not to have happened, <coughs> we wanted to attract the speaker's attention to those very clauses. How did you do that? We, 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 by, by standing and talking. Members of parliament wanted to talk before the papers would be laid. They only allowed Honorable Hassan Sisi to talk. Some of us stood and the speaker said he is not going to listen to anybody again. And that he's going to lay the paper. Okay, so I get it. So that is where, I mean, it all went wrong. Yes, because members of parliament thought is that, that if this paper is laid and our voices are not heard, it's an abrogation of not only the rights of members of parliament, but also the constitution. Now, how does this sound honorable? But even by that refusal, or, I mean, ignoring you to um, <coughs> have your say, I mean, you can, your, your members okay. rise up, you know, try to, I mean, forcefully get themselves be heard, or by extension, like we saw, I mean, all of these um, invectives, or perhaps even train of Again, objects, again, let me make this, this, let me make Because from what you say... No, I just want to make this correction. It was not, the, the, the misunderstanding was not, the skirmish was not amongst our members only. Okay, no, we, it we, was we, between SNPP okay. and APC. We, and we, we, we will not get to how it all started. I mean, the point. No, I just wanted uh, the to point I want to, to 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 arrive at is to the effect that you wanted um, the speaker. I mean, to give you the opportunity to be heard. Yes. You know, and perhaps to prevent the, I mean, the laying of people mm. at that material moment yes. that you needed to be heard. Yes. And that was not done. Yes. And so you resorted to the violence, was no, it? No, 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 no. I was in power. So what happened at that stage? That is what... When you stood up, when you were not given the opportunity... I was not given the opportunity. Yes. And said we are other members. We are not given the opportunity. Not given the what opportunity? happened? What did you do? The speaker insistently said every member should sit down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once he said that, what did you do? Yes. We sat down, you understand, and somebody wanted to talk. He, he insisted. And somebody from where? From our own side. Okay. Wanted to talk. He insisted. His no was a no. Yeah, he said nobody should talk again and that they should lay the paper. Okay. They should lay the paper. And what did you do? What did we do? Yes. Once he insisted, no one we stood up. Home. We stood up. Yes. We stood up. All of us stood up. Mm. Same. We said mm. that sitting, we are not going to continue if we are not at. Mm. If we are not at. City, I'm going to continue. Is that and let me tell you, it is not a crime. It's okay. not a crime. It's not a crime. Okay. Let me tell you, Parliament is not unique for members of Parliament to express their dissatisfaction. Go to other countries. You know, they do it. So what we were expecting, after members of Parliament stood up, stood up as a means of protestation against the decision of the Speaker, it would have been incumbent on the Speaker to call members of Parliament, call the leadership, let them go and hang it and see the way forward. But they should not say no, we are insisting. Even when the instrument has some constitutional implication for Christ's sake. Now we should um, not abuse our constitution because we have state securities. We should not do that. Yes, so I mean I mean I, I, I see the the, the points. <laughs> I mean you said this is not unique to I mean say Leon. I mean, it's happening in other, in other jurisdictions, in other areas, and all of this. But did you see how it all ended? I mean, once you stood I'll, up... I'll, I'll tell you why I will, I will tell you why you insisted, ended. you wanted yes, to be I'll, hard, yes, I'll tell you, you why wanted it, to prevent it ended the that papers. I'll tell you why it ended that way. <clears throat> it ended that way because they attracted attention of the, 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 the sergeant at arms, 
they were hitting members of parliament. SLPPM is also came at members of parliament. They, they, they called the police. The police entered the well of parliament. Police at what point were they invited? That is what I'm saying. Initially, it were the, the, the sergeant at arms who we are throwing at members of parliament. And members of parliament were also reacting. Yes. And later they had to call the When you say members of and parliament, are you referring to the opposition members of parliament? All members of parliament were inclusive. I have videos I can show you. SLPP MPs who are also throwing objects at APC MPs. I have the videos. I have the videos. But none of those SLPP MPs were mentioned in the report done by parliament. As if they have the right because it's their government. Right. Just before we conclude this bit of the, the discussion, I mean, we want to get it clear so our viewers and our listeners can, can, I mean, get to see the point that you stood up because you have refused or denied audience. Not only me, all of I us. I mean, uh, not Most you as an yes. as, 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 uh, honorable Abukabu. Yes, sir. You know, not you. I mean, those who wanted to be heard, I mean, we are not given the opportunity and they made that known by standing up and probably, like you said, trying to, I mean, stop the proceedings. Yes. Is that lawful? Is that, is that honorable, do you think? It, like I say, the House of Parliament is meant for members of Parliament. Go to the Constitution, there are immunities for members of Parliament. And as I always say also, it is the responsibility, the responsibility of the Speaker to comport the House. So if he sees that there is every tendency for members of Parliament, you know, to, 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 exp to express their dissatisfaction based on his ruling, he has the right to call the leadership for them to talk instead of insistently saying whether you want it or you don't want it, we are going to lay this paper that has some constitutional amendment. That would have been prevented easily. That would have been prevented. We are members of the SLPP reactive or defensive in the circumstance? How do you mean? I mean that's maybe you you stood up. And when, when you said when you when you when you, you said, to when you said defensive, it means they were attacked. Yes, I'm, I'm nobody okay. attacked members of parliament from the SLPP. No, 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 from the APC. No, nobody. Okay. I'll tell you, nobody did that. Yeah. They were part of the the the, 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 the <clears throat> misunderstanding. They were part of this. Um, um, let me invite the honourable to our country. I mean, we'll get to whether or not. Um, regulations contained um, maybe sort of amendments of the constitution i mean like the honorable has has uh, identified which was in his in his words a clever way of amending the constitution so but the point being made here is that once i mean they got dissatisfied you know with the way they were handled in this was by the speaker they were not given audience they were not heard you know they were given opportunity you know, to, to, I mean, make their representation, make their say, you know, I mean, they wanted to stop proceedings in a way which it is also not an offense. But no sooner that was done than you guys also, um, we are on the other side, I mean, training objectives, I mean, um, maybe trying to get, get to go at them, you know, which ended up the way it ended. Okay, let me start by saying two things before try to understand or to help the viewers to understand what I stated earlier that it is the primary intention of our colleagues on the other side to play the card of the victim and to play the card of oh we have been brutalized, we have been attacked, oh this is opposite, oh it is using state security, that is the card they want to play to the public. You know when you are playing to the guy and playing the sympathy card, it is difficult sometimes to contain both your real self and what is expected. Now, to start with, I was on my seat to show how well planned, how well thought of, and how well crafted it was. I was on my seat, I did not move throughout the argument. Yeah? Somebody from the gallery threw a missile from the gallery straight at my desk. A juice extra bottle. I did not mean for the fact that the Honorable Moses Majoki drew my attention to the public election bill that I brought in and I wanted to show him some provision. I wouldn't have been here to be talking to you. I would have either been dead because my head was buried right on my system, my uh, 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 microphone, and the missile came right from the gallery. 
yeah and in shock i was like standing in shock and my colleague the honorable ali ibrahim kamara or ibrahim ali kamara from constituency one two two was moving away from his own seat trying to see what had happened to me the same person or somebody else from the gallery threw another missile removed the seats the bottom seat of the seat at the gallery and threw it again at me and that chair that bottom seat had to hit the honorable ibrahim Aliu kamara from constituency 122 in his hand torn off his clothes and he had three major uh, scratches in his shoulder which was it was calculated it was thought of now let's come to the procedure he spoke of sergeant at arms that sergeant at arms we are brutalizing mps sergeant at arms we are interfering with the business but this is the procedure they have some procedure stand in order 13 stand in order 13 2 b it says one of the role of sergeants at arms is to obey all orders and direction for the preservation of order in the house which mr speaker may give him so if a member of parliament left his seat to collect the mace which is also part of his responsibility understanding order 13 2 to bring in and to protect what do you expect him to do so sit and another member of parliament take the symbol of authority which by itself like he said is reasonable because that is the parliamentary symbol of authority a member of parliament left his seat to collect that and to take it somewhere that is one he also spoke about constitutional amendments. You know, if the SLBC was covering the debate on the Public Elections Act, and you remember when we started, we started on procedure, and I drew the attention to the fact that they had already amended Section 32 by including the word gross misconduct already in the Public Elections Act of 2012. That was a treasonable act. It was done. It was us, this fifth parliament, that corrected that mistake by put into a proper constitutional instrument. Yeah? He also made mention of laying of papers that they wanted to speak before the paper would be laid or before the minister could lay the paper. There is no part in this standing order, understanding under 18, that this laying of paper that says a member of parliament should speak before the paper is laid. There is no. And relying on standing order 42, the speaker's decision is final. The speaker is so accommodating to the point that when the other paper was read and after we have done the records of votes and proceedings, when the clerks at the table introduced the first item on the other paper, which was the laying of the statutory instrument, the Honorable Asan Sisi, who was the, then the acting leader of the opposition, the current uh, uh, whip of the APC, stood up. He made this point for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. He expressed the paper is unconstitutional, the paper is not properly before Parliament, and the fact that the document was given to them on Tuesday, why he wanted to lay it on Wednesday, which was not firstly not the case. The paper was given to everybody, signed for it on Monday. So he wanted to use time to delay the process. And in all of this that they are doing, the point is, they are aware of the ECOWAS protocol which says you cannot make a change or an amendment to the elections or bring in new electoral laws six months to the elections. So they wanted to buy time, they wanted to use this chaos to kill the activity of parliament so as to ensure that by the next two weeks, the other item on the parliamentary order will be the debate of the state's budget. So it is calculated, it is well thought of. Now, come to think of the behaviors of MPs. Section 97 of the Constitution is clear. Paragraph A, as for what is expected of MPs to maintain the dignity of Parliament within and outside Parliament. Now, if you're talking about amending the Constitution, and I've seen a lot of uh, write-ups where people are saying, like he read in 38, 38 a, 1 and, 2 and 3, Although he did not read one. One has no business with that. Uh, no, I know. I said although he did not read one. 
but initially it was one that was a topical issue that oh constituencies are, are still in existence uh, these have been established but you cannot see 38 1 in isolation of 38 3 of the constitution 1991 but let me address the issue of 38 2 and 38 3. what he read was technically saying the electoral commission wants to include um, independent candidates in the conduct of elections for member of parliament. This constitution is almost silent on the word independent candidates. Mark my words, almost silent. Everybody is relying on section 74. Section 74 that defines the categories of members of parliament. Where is my 74? 74, okay. You see? Members of parliament shall comprise the following. A, paragraph A. One member of parliament for each district who shall, subject to the provision of this constitution, be elected in such manner as may be prescribed by or under any law from among the persons who, under any law, are for the time being parliament chief, and B, such such number of members as parliament may prescribe who subject to the provision of this constitution shall be elected in such manner as may be prescribed by or under any law this constitution is almost like go to 77m that is the first clear mention of the word independent it says a member of parliament shall vacate its seat in parliament paragraph m if being elected to parliament as an independent candidate, he joins a political party in parliament. That is the first clear mention of the word independent candidate. The second is 93 6. Section 93. Let's see, The proposal of effectively performing. No. 93 5. Mm -hmm. The composition of each of the committees appointed under subsection 1, 2, and 4 shall, as much as possible, reflect the strength of political parties and independent members in parliament. So, come to speak of this, I've heard a lot about independence, independence. There's no clear cut provision of independent candidates mm. in this constitution, 1991, Act number 6. Mm. So, to say you cannot make provision or you cannot make regulation under Section 33, relying on this almost salient and dormant provisions in 77M and 93.5 and the unclear provision in 74 paragraph A and B to include another or to say those categories mentioned in 77M and in 93.5 have to be included in the statutory instrument makes the instrument an amendment to the constitution. It's a no-brainer. Alright. Um, um, the, the point is made here. Um, um, Honorable um, Abdul Kabul. Yes, sir. Um, he was very clear on the provisions of uh, section 74, 1, paragraph A uh, and B. Okay. And one key thing that you have pointed out, I mean, from your opening um, um, statement was to the effect that there was an attempt, I mean, it was surreptitiously, in fact, to amend the constitution. Um, by way of a statutory instrument or by way of the regulations that we have put or laid before parliament, something you wanted to forestall. Is there anything, any law that actually, I mean, deprives or that actually holds them against um, um, that kind of, because from what you read, if you look at 74B, such number of members of parliament may prescribe who, subject to the provisions of this constitution, shall be elected in such manner, in such manner as may be prescribed by or under any law. Under any law, if the statutory instrument were to become law, those regulations will become law, they become any other law, as a matter of fact, which means the Electoral Commission um, can elect to use um, that law in so far as getting those representations in parliament is necessary. How would you respond to well, coincidentally uh, you are yourself? I have read 
the amendment they relied on, which is 38A, it does not make provision for independence. It's clear, I said, political parties shall contest. Seats will be allocated to political parties. The amendment is very clear. So if you want to change that, you must amend the constitution. You must not refer to any other law. There is no law that you, could, that you can compare to the constitution. The constitution surpasses every other law. You cannot use a subsidiary law to amend the constitution. In fact, Sawa was contradictory to, a, to an extent. He said there is no clear cut of the mention of independence in the constitution. And he went further to reading um, 77M, which clearly says when an independent joins another political party, he loses his seat. And he went further also to, to measure um, 93.5 which states that when committees are distributed, uh, independent candidates also must be taken into consideration. You see? And when you go, you see, let me tell you what is bad about what this government is doing. You cannot cherry pick the clauses you obey in the constitution. You cannot do that. You obey everything in the constitution. You cannot say, I would use uh, 38A1 to do the PR, even though we know the circumstances under which 38A1 must be used does not currently exist. And you say no, it's 32, because 32 is saying it is political parties that should contest, or it is seat should be given to, 30, to political parties. Let us avoid that, and let us come with a regulation to amend that. that. No, you are a lawyer. Okay, now, not and that that's why me. I want you to address. No, me let on. me just. Yes, you, you, you come. There are a few things he said that I want to clear. No, I'm staying with you. Okay. I, I'm, I'm definitely staying with you. Thank I just you. want you to address me on this aspect about those who constitute parliament, uh, pursuant to section 74.1 that he actually read. I mean, that's yeah. um, 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 triggered my attention, mm -hmm. to which I, I require your response. Mm -hmm. Members of parliament shall comprise mm -hmm. the following. Yes. Members of parliament yes. shall comprise the following. I mean, yes. That should be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Subsection B. Yes. So such number of members mm -hmm. as parliament may prescribe. Yes. Who? Mm -hmm. Subject to the provisions of this constitution, mm -hmm. this constitution in Paris, mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. shall be elected in such manner as may be prescribed by or under any other law. Yes. Any law. Yes. Because this constitution yes. would appear to give effect mm -hmm. or efficacy mm -hmm. to any other law yes. made mm -hmm. by the required authority mm -hmm. insofar as the election of members of yes. parliament you know yes. um, is an issue. Once right? so that law does not go against the constitution. Now let me give you yeah. the answer to your question. Read for read please you have the constitution. The but answer you to your question this. is in 935. 935. Okay. It says the composition of each of the committees appointed under subsection one, two and four shall as much as possible reflect the strength of political parties and independent members in parliament. The committee. Is it? Yes, mm -hmm. the committee mm -hmm. should reflect the political parties and independent members in parliament. Yes. Yeah. So if you are referring to a law that is contravening the constitution and you want to establish that law, in fact, like I said, I, I spoke about um, one way it. Even when you are copying the constitution verbatim into a subsidiary law, it needs to talk majority votes of members of parliament. It needs to talk majority votes of members. Even when no amendment is made on the constitution, you just copy in word for word what is in the constitution to any act. You have to have two thirds majority votes of members of parliament. So what's the point there? Yes. So my point is, you cannot go against 38 a 2 which clearly says in a district proportional system, only political parties, it's political parties that contest. It shall be contested, political parties shall contest. And also seats shall be allocated to political parties. Now you want to bring in independent candidates. Let's go, I mean that very section. Okay, now. Which uh, only uh, limits it uh, to uh, political it parties. Often said that you can do what the law uh, does not say you cannot do. Okay, you can do what the law does not say you cannot do. What prevents 
ECSL, I mean the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone, for making regulations for inclusion. No, no, it, no, no, it's, it's contravening the Constitution for Christ's sake. The Constitution is saying political parties uh, in the district block, elections shall be contested by political parties. If you want to change that, you want to include another set of people who are not political parties, you should amend that clause. Okay, now you should uh, amend that clause. Crossing over to no, let me just let me just go. No, no, to, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Crossing over to yeah. to him. I mean, you know, you you, you know, yeah. reading the provisions. I mean, um, in in isolation, that is what that provision provides. Mm -hmm. Thirty-eight, you're referring to. Yes. But then, if you move further, mm -hmm. you see the very constitution, the same constitution mm -hmm. empowering the electoral body, in this case ECSL, mm -hmm. to make laws. Those laws should not, those laws are regulations. Regulations are subsidiary laws to the constitution. You cannot equate the regulation to the constitution. Mm -hmm. So where the regulation contravenes the constitution, you should not empower the regulation. No, the In fact, there is no law that should go against no, the constitution. When, when these regulations eventually command the spirit of parliament. I mean, that's why they are not just made in isolation. I mean, they are not just provided for today and then they are effected tomorrow. They are again taken to members of parliament. I mean, lay before parliament, getting your blessing. And that is why you didn't have cause to debate them. I mean, where you see or you find out that they are not really for the interest of these people. Again, again. So when they get to your um, way and eventually they carry the spirit what prevents the body like neck in this again, distance? Again, let me this clear. You are, you are a lawyer. I mean, that's why we're trying to, <laughs> you to, know, to, to get that. You are a lawyer yourself. Because because you they, know they, what you say? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. What, the point that you have tried to make is the fact that, apart from making that valid point, I mean, subsidiary... I'm happy, I'm happy you said it. No, I mean, yeah. I mean that's just general. Yeah. That subsidiary legislations cannot override. No, no, no. You know, no but in no, this no, instance, no. It doesn't appear to be a subsidiary amendment. But I have just read, I have just read in the amendment where it clearly says elections shall be contested by political parties and seats shall be allocated, seats seat won by political parties, you know, shall be allocated to political parties. So if you don't want the election to be contested by political parties, you want to bring in another set of people to contest this same election, amend that clause. Don't come with a subsidiary. Let me tell you why they did this. If they wanted to amend the constitution on that city, they are supposed to have two-thirds majority votes of the members of parliament. That they cannot provide. That they cannot produce. But when you go with statutory instruments, you lay it. Anybody who wants to annul that instrument should, prov so should provide the two-thirds majority vote. You see? So that is why, even when they know that the constitution should not be amended in a, statu in a statutory instrument, they went against the law. They went against procedure. They included, you know, sections of the constitution. And let me tell you, in the regulations, the forms of elections are in section 38. 38 different forms of elections. So when you want to introduce a new set of elections, go and amend 38. Be it 38, you know, or 38A. You should amend them. So to me, it was a disservice to this nation. It was a blatant attempt to destroy the constitution of this nation to a subsidiary law, which is against the spirit of even the parliament that is established there. They did it because they have the security. They did it because they have power in their hand, you know. And let me tell you, when my member of parliament was saying, was talking here, he said, people from the gallery, we are painting stones on members of parliament from the SLPP. It was not only members of parliament from the SLPP. I told you that Honorable Kosan Tolly was admitted because he was painted with stone from the gallery. And this is not the first time. Honorable Arusai Alu Conte was pelted with stone. He fainted in, in, in parliament and was washed to hospital. And nobody took any action. Nobody was arrested. No report was written because he's from the opposition. No report was written. Nobody was questioned. They said if they want to kill him, he's an opposition MP. But today, just in the twinkle of an eye, we, we saw a report being tabled in parliament. And the report indicted only opposition MP. 
when the when the fracas was between opposition MP and 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 and, 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 and MP. And also he said the sergeant and times, I am happy that he referred to their function. No powers, nobody, no sergeant at arm has the power to lay hand on a member of parliament. No sergeant at arm has the power to paint a member of parliament with stone. He is now, I'm coming. No, no powers. No, we need that to No powers. Yeah, let's, let's no, I, I have read that. That book is too small for me. I have read it up and down. So when I say no powers, I'm saying it authoritatively. No powers. A member of a, a, a sergeant at arm should not pelt a member of parliament with his stone. We saw it and he's justifying it. Today you are on a ruling bench. Tomorrow you might be an opposition MP. You want an, a member of a, a sergeant at arm to pelt a stone on you? These things you should begin to say it now, not when it begins to haunt you. We are all members of parliament. You have a long future in the parliament. You are a good member of parliament. They like you in your constituency. So don't doubt if you are in parliament when the party will be in opposition. I will not see and see a, a sergeant at arm, me a sergeant at arm, pelting stone on members of parliament. And he's here justifying it. All right. Um, um, I can see emotions are beginning to um, um, you know, show by the honorable. But the point being made, um, honorable Tower, is to the effect that this attempt by the um, ruling MPs, you know, uh, was calculated to have this, um, you know, constitution, like I said, amended by way of these statutory provisions and regulations that you made. Why is that is important and is subject to interpretations mm -hmm. and all of this? What is clear? I mean, because this thing was on 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 set. The, what happened in Parliament? I mean, cameras are all over the place. And no sooner that was done than, I mean, social media was awash with all of these um, um, issues. You don't see um, the Honorable Abu Kabo, the Honorable Ibrahim Tower Conte, I mean, named or, I mean, you know, seeing uh, parenting stones or suffering you know, as a result of this. And this is the conduct for which I think um, we are also here to, 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 to address, much as the Honorable Kabo has said, it's not something that is new. But how would you manage your emotions if you think things are going the other way? Um, things that are not in your interest, or you don't feel protected at some point, or you don't feel recognized and to stand up and say, what is it that you can get to do? You see, just so to avoid. You see, you see, you see one thing, one thing, one thing I have sensed of recent in Sierra Leone is people from people who have dissenting views. People who, who say no. It's, it's not no, only about no, views. Yeah, I'm coming. We are talking about punches. Yes, I'm, I'm coming. coming. About I'm coming. Damage I'm to coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. You know, for MPs to protest in the well of parliament is not a crime. Was that a protest? Yes. I mean, we're seeing to stand up is a protest. To say no, we cannot continue with this sitting is a protest. It's a, it's a, yes, because it's not India. Because sergeant at arms, we are invited at this MPs. Police, we are taken to the well. And MPs, we are booted out of the well. MPs, we are booted out Just of the Just because they stood up or they wanted to be heard. Yeah, it all started refusing them to be heard mm -hmm. and wanting to forcefully lay a paper that has some constitutional amendments as a statutory instrument. And once they tried, it was to forcefully lay those papers. What did you do, or your members? I am, we have passed that stage. I have explained everything. The members of the opposition stood up as a means of protest. So what, you see? And once they stood up, in, in, in democracy, you. in democracy, you should always create the opportunity for even the minority to have their say. You cannot be insistent, say, insistent in saying, no, I don't want to hear them. What, what I am set to for today, I will do. Whether they go up, they come down, whether they do everything, we will not listen to them. That is why we are reaching this stage. Right. That is why we are reaching this stage. Firstly, I will consistently rely on my first attempts before making any other statements. That the purpose and intent of my colleagues on the other side is to create a situation where they will be effective. 
or where they rely on public sentiment. And say, oh, they are brutalizing them. Oh, this is uncalled for. Why should they forcefully lead instruments? How do you want the instruments to be? Well, section 33 says, it said, subject to the provision of this constitution, the electoral commission shall, like he was underlining the shall in part A, two and three, shall be responsible for the conduct and supervision of the registration of voters for and of all public elections and their phenomena. And for the purpose, another shall have power to make regulations by statutory instruments for the registration of voters, the conduct of presidential, parliamentary, or local government elections. Correct. So the, it is the primary responsibility to the statutory instruments, the primary legislation, mm -hmm. to make those rules and regulations for the conduct of presidential, mm -hmm. parliamentary, and local government elections. Correct. That is one to tell you that the intent and purpose is to use the medium as the of no, 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 I'm coming. Change the constitution. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. Will not amend the constitution. There is no way that regulation amends the constitution. He is continuously stressing the fact that 38, A, 2, and 3 is saying political parties. Let's see what 35, 1 of the constitution says. It says, subject to the provision of this section, political parties may be established to participate in shaping the political will of the people to disseminate information on political ideas and social and economic programs of national character and to sponsor candidate political parties mm -hmm. to sponsor candidates for presidential, mm -hmm. parliamentary or local government elections. Mm -hmm. So you now see the spirit and intent behind, uh, behind the provisions of 38, 2 and 3 that it was reading. Because this constitution says it is the primary responsibility of political parties. political parties. No, it is registration and conduct of political parties. Yes. So this constitution has said it is the primary responsibility of political parties. Mm -hmm. I have read in Tahalia that there is no clear court provision in this constitution that will tell you that okay, independent candidate like in 38, like in 35 now. And he has also spoke about 38 too as the means as the means to settle or to deal with the types of forms of ele um, election of the parliament. And you will come back to where I started in my last submission, the line of 74. 38 1 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, Act number 6 of 1991. It says Sierra Leone shall be divided into such constituencies for the purpose of electing the members of parliament referred to in paragraph B of subsection 1 of section 74 of this constitution as the electoral commission acting with the approval of parliament signified by resolution of parliament may prescribe so if you are relying on 38 a 2 and 3 38 1 is clear as to where you rely on when it comes to setting or determining what forms and what types of members of parliament constitute parliament if you rely on either of the 38 and connected to 74, which does not have any express measure for independent can, uh, candidate as, uh, as a category of member of parliament, then you begin to wonder as to why the importance of this statutory instrument that they protested and like he said, they were refused to be heard. That is not true. On their side, two people spoke. The honorable acting leader, the Honorable Hassan CC, he spoke for like 50 minutes, and when he ended the submission, the Honorable Ahmad Uba of Constituency, number 5, from Wellington, or number 8, I cannot remember his exact constituency, rose from his seat, and made another submission for another 10-15 minutes. The only submission that was heard from our side was from the leader of government business. And after making his point, the speaker told them clearly, categorically, that all what we have said is premature and is of no effect because, as per standing order 18, laying of papers, no paper has been laid before you. So what are you debating? Are you preempting the, 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 the document that is going to be laid before us? I don't know, Mr. Speaker said. What I know is, on the other paper, 
I have seen laying of paper, constitutional history. Let the paper be laid and let's the procedures. This is a house of procedure. This is a house of process. And from all the documents I've made, from all the submissions I've made, you will realize that the oh, my honorable colleague is continuously trying to accentuate and demonstrate the initial motive to play the 50. He spoke of the honorable Zantoli. I would invite you to parliament. Go and see where the honorable was. I'm afraid I'm not sure I will be secure. You are secure. I will invite you. I'll take no, when, you don't, when you see I mean, <laughs> these things flying all over the place. No, I, 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 I will want you to go and see as a journalist first hand where the honorable was. And so, our journalists, our colleagues injured in the world. The honorable Ozantoli sits right under the gallery where he cannot be seen except by the speaker or maybe colleague members of parliament. So, how can he be pelted with foreign materials? All right. Let now, me tell you what happened to him. You see? Let me tell you what happened to him. He wanted to join the chaos. He left his seat, moved to where his colleagues were. The honorable Lai Mara left his seat. He was not with Thai. He moved to where the, the leader of the opposition normally sits, where the honorable Assange right. was. Uh, I'm afraid. And in trying to join the opposition, he had an attack. All right. The honorable Tawa, please. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody uh, attacking me. I don't I mean, you are honorable member. I mean, let's 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 avoid the you say I say. You know, for the time being. Yeah, let's go. You know, uh, let's, let's, let's 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 discuss let's, let's discuss um, um, the issues. Like I said, mm -hmm. what I particularly want to address. I'm 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 not sure I'm going to give the opportunity again to respond to react. No, no, to I'm all only, uh, just now. I mean, it's about the way forward. Okay, uh, let's talk about the procedure. I mean, if you feel hard on by in Parliament, arising from the fact that you have been denied audience, yes. you know. Or oh, like he said, nothing was before Parliament at Amatia. Nothing was laid before Parliament. You wanted to prevent the laying of whatever. I mean, either because of what probably you may have speculated and all of this, but that was before it. But even if that was the case, what would have been the proper thing to do? What is it that we can do moving forward? Even where we suspect, even where we think that what is to be laid has so much, I mean, uh, uh, I think it would have so much effect on our party, on our position as a party, and all of this. Because it is that ugly spectacle for the people of Sierra Leone, you represent us, that we must try to avoid. What path can we follow? I mean, both parties, even where we feel hard on by. Um, let me make this clear again. You see, um, we should respect the Constitution as a parliament and as a nation. The constitution is what directs our actions as a country. If I'm happy that when he was talking he read the functions of a political party to sponsor candidate, that, those are all not related to our argument. We know the functions of political parties. Yeah. But it did not go against what I quoted in 38A, 2 and 3 that in the block, district block system, only political parties send in candidates contesting the elections. Okay, honorable. I'm coming, sir. Honorable. I'm coming, sir. Honorable. I'm coming, sir. Honorable. Let me be I'm the just, speaker I'm, for, I'm, I'm, for I'm this be... moment. Let me be the speaker for for this moment. I mean, to um, rule or overrule certain positions that you have. I mean, the point has been made. You have succinctly made your point. I mean, you started off with um, what appeared in your view to be surreptitious move to do all of this will have will have to that he has responded in this way what we are the way forward that's the way forward the i way mean forward what the way is it forward, that you can do the way forward yes parliament should be very very much careful with the way we amend the constitution otherwise i'm coming i'm coming you see when we are intolerant when we don't want to hear dissenting voice because we think we have governance now, we should do whatever we want to do. We have the police, we can call them at the beck and call, they can come and, and achieve and help us achieve our plan, help us achieve our aim. That is why we are where we are today. Even when you have authority, even when you have all the forces at your disposal, you should be open to listen to other voices. And that is what is lacking. I'm telling you, if the voice of the opposition would have been heard, 
you know, if an atmosphere would have been created for dialogue, we would have come together as one. Let, the, the public elections act was more, you know, problematic than what they took to parliament now. But in the public elections act, they came, we negotiated, we dialogued, and we passed it without anybody crying. Because there were negotiations. But in this one, they insistently said, whether we are one time or we are not one time or this will be lay up or the beat on our back. Because they are all, you know, they showed their skin daddy, you know. But to me, Tawa should be concerned that nobody should admit the constitution so repetitiously. Nobody should use a, 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 a subsidiary legislation to amend the constitution. Him and I, as members of parliament, should protect our constitution. We should not be party to any amendment with, of this constitution without the prerequisite provision. As we try to conclude, Honorable Ibrahim uh, Conte, I mean, the point being made by him is uh, to the effect of respect, you know, um, to both sides of the world. You know, that uh, sometimes with negotiations, I mean, you can have your way um, in all of this, but insistence on, on doing um, what you believe um, should be done is creating um, all of this. I mean, the, you guys started off by saying that was a very bad spectacle, you know, as, as honorable members and four honorable members of parliament. Moving forward, like how do you think, even as members of the ruling party, should respond to um, protest, you know, um, by members of the opposition in the world? Because your constituents, your people, are, they, are, they are looking at you, they are looking up to you, and seeing you, I mean, um, St. Ponches, you know, um, um, at one another, presents the parliament in negative light. I think the first thing to say is that honesty is key. You know the way they would present negotiation and consultation in public is different from what happens in parliament. For a business to appear on the other paper, <laughs> there's a business committee. And in that business committee, the leader of the opposition is a member, is a critical member. And from what I heard in the chamber, I'm not a member of the committee from the leader of government business, was that they are discussed, they are consulted, and they should put the laying of this paper on the other paper as scheduled on Wednesday. So if he had agreed for and on behalf of the opposition party, the APC, that this document can come on the other paper for laying on the table of parliament, I don't know what level of consultation needed to be done beyond that. Because I cannot just bring a document to you. I cannot just walk into the FNBC and say, oh, I want to do a program and I come to the studio. I would have talked to you and you would have given your nod to either of your presenters for them to allow me to come in here and maybe to the, large, to the largest extent for the person I know in you, you would have wanted to hear what the content of my conversation is before giving your green light. So, the leader of opposition, a member of parliament of over 15 years standing, cannot just sit by lay a paper without seeing the contents of the paper. That is not possible. So, for him to have agreed that let this document come on the other paper for Wednesday, he wanted to lay it as per as the budget debate is going on. But the leader of government business took due note of SO63 that when the budget debate is going on, no other document should conjoin that debate. So they agreed that, okay, let's come on Wednesday, and the following week, starting Monday, the Monday that I started, we, we can start the budget debate. So I don't know what level of consultation should be done. So my first point is, going forward, we have to be honest. That is one. Secondly, we, it also bothers on honesty, but it bothers on honesty in public. What I mean? The members of parliament are creating a picture to the public that we are, we are in acrimony, that we are fighting every day, we don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that ugly incident in the chamber, when parliament, when parliament was adjourned on the same day, members of parliament, the same members of parliament from opposing side, 
We are outside the canteen, either a drinking, be eating food together, sharing pie, drinking water, conversing and talking about how they will face other documents in the future. The following day, the same members of parliament were at Atlantic Hotel discussing the, the uh, uh, civil aviation bill. So we should not get the picture to the public that, oh, eh, we are being victimized to the point that, oh, we are not even in good books. They brought in police to boot us out. If the speaker, the authority that he has within him, cannot maintain all that decency and to protect Section 97 of the Constitution, to protect the image and reputation of Parliament, then he would have no other option but to rely on SO 43 men. And what does that say? It sounds as though we're in Parliament. I'm sorry. It said nothing in this order shall be taken to deprive Parliament of the power of proceeding against any member for any breach of order not specified herein or from proceedings in any other way Parliament thinks fit in dealing with the breaches of order herein mentioned. So if what's is available to him are just sergeant at arms. And there are like three, four, five, let's say ten. And what was happening in the parliament? Nobody can tell you that untrained personnel that are called sergeant at arms can quell that situation. So he would have to rely on SO 439 to help calm the situation down. And if he cannot calm the situation down, what should be done? All right. Um, um, so for me, let me finish. For me, if we are to move forward, like he said, we have to respect this constitution. And I have not seen anything contrary in the statutory instruments. That sounds like a point of agreement, respecting the constitution. I mean, you. Yes, I mean, because if you are respecting the constitution, the constitution has said earlier that in section 53.4 says consultation and the outcome of that consultation is not bound on the person for whom that consultation is required. And it is a provision in Subsection 15 of section 171. So that is respect for the constitution. So if we are consulted and I say, okay, I'm not going to take a consultation, you should not come to the chamber and rely on fighting. Go to 177 and move a motion for a debate. All right, okay. Eventually, um, the Honorable Kabo, are you debating this um, the instrument that was laid? If at all it was laid? It was not laid in our presence and then basically we only had that it was laid. Are you debating it? After we have said that we will meet as a as a as a as a caucus. As a caucus and we'll meet and take a decision on that. Okay, as we try to conclude, I mean this uh, I mean one thing that you have said which we hope will be implemented is the respect for the constitution of both sides and the fact that we should not allow um, um, these incidents, you know, to take center stage, I mean in the proceedings more often than not, even where you said this is not unique to this uh, parliament of Sierra Leone. I think um, invectives, I mean, seeing all of these obvious flying, these are not things we hope to see in the future, especially from honorable members of parliament. Your part in short, as we um, um, try to conclude this, this program. Say again? Your, part in short, your closing uh, remarks. Well, I just want to say, you know, you cannot expect everybody to share the same idea, even when you are running your home. You cannot expect your wife to think the way you think. But you should not beat your wife or maltreat your wife because she has a contrary view to you. Always create the room to listen to your wife. So if your wife says, today I will not cook because you have not treated me well, don't say I'll beat you. Don't say I'll call police for you. Talk to your wife. Why are you not cooking? How, how, how have I gone wrong? Sometimes the way we manage our home is what we take to the public. Yes, what we take to the public. So always I have said, opposition is part of democracy. Opposition is part of democracy. So you cannot say, now we get the power. They're not for telling you waiting for do. Lord, do what you want to do. It should not go that way. It should not go that mm -hmm. way. We are, all, like you said, we are all friends. We are friends. I was like, even in the world, we are friends. We talk. You understand? We are friends. And like I said, we should not say because we want to do this you know we'll do it at all cost whatever we want to do this parliament there are books that guides there are books that guide us in parliament 
don't say I'm going against this book and no opposition stop me. All right. Whether they do this, they do that, we'll still go ahead. Like I said, let us begin to think together. It's for our country. If you are beginning to do it, whosoever will succeed, whichever government will come again, will continue in that trend. All right, then, just before so, your opening shots, um, the other uh, let's see what the, the viewers are saying here. Democracy sometimes can be hard, and the Constitution must be protected. By so doing, it needs mm. dialogue, inclusion, courage, and unity. This is from Mohammed Kano. Why are the MPs always fighting themselves when they are there for all Sierra Leoneans? Say it loud, and this is from Francis Misakoi. No SLPP member ordered the police to attack anybody. Um, is it a clerk, in his view, who may have done that, who do not want to see others comporting themselves, whether APC or SLPP? I mean, this is unclear, but it's from Princess Kane. A real Salomon must indeed fight for his guide. Go on, brothers. Fight for your beloved Salomon. God bless you. This is from Amana to Samus. Reading class, don't open. No, reading class. Yes, reading class. This is Creole. Reading class, don't open. Yeah, yeah, back. All man, they read section for fit the argument. And this is from uh, Stephen um, Nyale. Also, I see here. I'm afraid we um, don't have much time again for more text messages. But continue flowing them in. We'll get our people to respond to them as we proceed. Your parting shots, the Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte. Uh, I would want to say consistently that this parliament has negotiated more than any parliament in the past. Were well, you part of any parliament? Because the other parliament in this the your past, parliament. I know, the, well, the other parliament in the past, we are either a dominated by one party, for which the views and opinion of the other side is more or less not needed. Imagine between 2012 and 2018, the APC needed just two members of parliament to, to get two third. And between 2007 and, and 2012, the APC had, I think the gap was between five and ten to have two thirds. Because they won every seat in the western area. They won, they won every seat in the north. And they won seats in Kailau. The Honorable uh, uh, Tambasa of Blessed Memory. You know me, I'm not a lawyer. I've not been a lawyer before, but I would always say, first of all, my first boss was a lawyer, the Lady Kalila, if I'm today's a bad day. So I have taken time so you're to obey the law and follow processes and procedures. So for me, negotiation and disagreements and so listening to dissenting views is part of my DNA because I was born from an APC. Oh, my father is APC. My father was APC to his death. But he was alive. He was APC. I was SLPP. Everybody was conducting his business for his political party in the same house, but with quiet and peace. So I see no reason why in my adulthood I will go to parliament for which I never expected and begin to fight someone that has an opposing view and this is not no i believe in what i was taught in my home that if you have a dissenting view if your views are different from the rest find a way of channeling your view without creating caution and that was how i channeled and funded all my views whilst my father was apc and most of my students were apc except for my younger brother who is also slpp but we found ways of channeling our views on to the point today I'm a SIPP member represent, a parliamentarian representing the SIPP. We've never had a fight. So I want to end by saying let us create and express the same love and uh, 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 stability as members of parliament that we have behind the scene in the chamber for the public to see. Because when you come to the chamber and create this kind of a chorus situation, it seems as if they are in constant bitterness and they are fighting every day. We are not fighting. We talk every day. We eat every day. We play every day. So let us bring that same conversation that we have, or that same conversation that we are having on a number of documents, on someone in the SLBC, on someone in other agency that we agree on. Let us bring it to the chamber so that the people of Sierra Leone will see the parliament. Maybe those who saw that event on that day, that ugly event on that day, or who were on social media, I mean, seeing MPs train missiles, you know, using invectives, 
you know, against one another, may still think that you guys are at loggerheads. You may want to demonstrate that law of consent. He's my man. He's my, between, he's uh, my brother. Yes. He's my man. Let me tell you. <laughs> if I let you stand up, this is the honorable he's man of God. Man. <laughs> if I actually collect his offering, most times he will give me, is this one thought? No, interestingly, <laughs> yes. he's a brother. Mm. I remember when I was incarcerated in Lomli, he was yeah. there till midnight. He wanted even... I asked the police yeah. to release him so yeah. that he would sleep in my yeah, custody, yeah, yeah, in my house, yeah, yeah. and in the morning I would yeah. take him. And but that, they say the and, offense for which he was charged <laughs> was grave. And that is the difference between <laughs> a ruling MP and an opposition MP. A ruling MP will never sleep in <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I think this is nice. Um, um, demonstrating that uh, kind of love, um, um, you know, to the people of Sierra Leone. I mean, to demonstrate that indeed, even amidst, um, you know, the bitterness and all of this will remain, um, Sierra Leone will remain united as a people and all of this. And that's how we come to the end of this program, the bottom line, uh, which came to you from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, uh, television, yeah, and those who followed us on radio and also our social media platforms, um, those who followed us. Hope you enjoyed the program. We are you missed part of all of this edition. We'll have time to bring you a repeat broadcast of the same. Otherwise, you'll have to join us next uh, Tuesday for a fresh edition of the program, Bottom Line. Many thanks to all of you who joined us. I mean, um, particularly members of the technical crew. As usual, this program was produced by Tilly Kuma. Until you see me when I see you. Uh, Joseph Ibenda Kapua is the name we should you all. A pleasant evening. Bye-bye.